Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to St. Mary's this morning in spirit, and indeed, as from next week, hopefully, we'll be able to join together physically. Today, being Advent Sunday, we're going to start highlighting the Advent wreath. There are several traditions about the meanings of the uh, candle, but the theme that accords best with the one that we are, I think, mainly uh, used to is that of the first candle we light to remember the patriarchs. That's uh, Abraham and Isaac, Jacob, and, uh, and those. The second week we open, uh, we light another candle that's for the prophets. Third week, a particular prophet is remembered in St. John the Baptist. And the final red candle will light to remember the Virgin Mary. But, and of course, the white, white one in the middle will be light on Christmas Day to welcome the light of Christ. So we're going to start by welcoming, lighting the first candle. If we can get this light. That's more cooperative. Patriarch and more cooperative over here. We pray. God of Abraham and Sarah, and all the prophet patriarchs of old, you are our father too. Your love is revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of David. Help us in preparing to celebrate his birth and to make our hearts ready for your Holy Spirit, to make his home among us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. Day being the fifth Sunday of the month, we have uh, often used it to use a slightly different form of the Eucharist from normal. Today, we're having our order of the Celtic Eucharist, which you'll see will be different as soon as we start. We start by saying together the first prayer. As if this were the only time and this the only, and we the only people. Jesus Christ will meet us, we say together, as this were the only time, and this the only place, and we the only people. Let us worship God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we begin our service by hopefully singing together our first hymn. Awake, awake, fling off the night, for God has sent his glorious light. Thank you. 
this morning, remembering who we are and who we are worshipping. O oh God, our creator, your kindness has brought us the gift of a new morning. Help us to leave yesterday and not to cover tomorrow, but to accept the uniqueness of today. We stay together. By your love, celebrated in your word, seen in your son, brought near by your spirit. Take from us what we need to carry no longer, so that we may be free again to choose to serve you and be served by each other. To all and to each, where regret is real, God pronounces pardon and peace and the right to begin again. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. The collect for today. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We move now to Malcolm, who is going to read our gospel for us. Our reading this morning is found in Mark's Gospel, chapter 13, starting at verse 24. In the days after that time of trouble, the sun will grow dark. The moon will no longer shine. The stars will fall from heaven and the power in space will be driven from their courses. Then the Son of Man will appear, coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send the angels out to the four corners of the earth to gather God's chosen people from one end of the world to the other. Let the fig tree teach you a lesson. When its branches become green and tender and it starts putting out leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you will know that the time is near, ready to begin. Remember that all these things will happen before the people now living have all died. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. No one knows, however, when that day or hour will come. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son. Only the Father knows. Be on watch, be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It will be like a man who goes away from home on a journey and leaves his servants in charge. After giving to each one his own work to do and after telling the doorkeeper to keep watch. Be on guard then, because you do not know when the master of the house is coming. It might be in the evening, or at midnight, or before dawn, or at sunrise. If he comes suddenly, he must not find you asleep. What I say to you then, I will say to all, watch this is the word of the lord praise to you O christ in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen i have a little visual aid this morning you won't be able to see it very well it's a little black piece of plastic but it's actually worth quite a lot. It's my credit card. The credit card, very useful this time of year, but a symbol of the crisis our economy is now in. Like many others, Denise and I are rather concerned about the cost involved in celebrating Christmas. 
Even in this year of limited entertaining, there are still some costs. And of course, there are the presents. Like many, we're getting many of the presents using that almost inescapable icon, the credit card. The bill, of course, will arrive eventually. It'll arrive, in our case, in the middle of December, just as my pension arrives in the bank. And we finally calculated that the pay in the bank will cover the credit card account. In fact, the credit card company doesn't make any money out of us because we always pay off the debt each month. But we live on tick, many of us do, with the monthly statement to pay off. And it's something so many of us have been doing for so many years now. Trouble is, some folk haven't been reckoning the costs of their purchases as they buy them. And so a lot of people found themselves getting deeper and deeper into debt as they tried to repay a small debt by taking on a larger one and even larger the next month and so on and so on. But more of this in a few minutes. Today, we start the season of Advent, which is a strange mixture. On the one hand, it begins the four weeks of preparation for Christmas. The goodwill, the pleasures, the renewing of friendships, which perhaps we mainly are doing via Zoom at the moment, but people we only sometimes see once a year. There are the pre presents to give and receive, again, probably via Zoom or by parcel post. All good stuff to look forward to. But the church goes all solemn. The, color, the note of rejoicing is somewhat muted in our services. The seasonal colour? Well, yes, it's a sombre violet. We don't use the Gloria in the Eucharist. Often we say the Ten Commandments. And in many churches, there are no flowers on the altar during Advent. So why the gloom? Well, it's not that the church is being perverse or difficult. The church has always rejoiced at the birth of Jesus. The fact of the incarnation, God becoming man, sharing our human lot, is at the centre of our faith. But we have another idea, which is also important. The church has also remembered the second coming of Jesus. His coming in glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead. And the concept of judgment is not always necessarily good news for many of us. Each of us will recall those things we've done or avoided doing, which will result in a black mark on our personal history, things for which we are hopefully sorry. So there are two contrary ideas in Advent, the rejoicing and the penitence. Penitence for our sins, our shortcomings, those things which we do which are below the standard that God sets. Those things by which we shall all be judged. But what do we actually believe about judgment? Many folk think that the idea of a day of judgment is crude, far-fetched. If God is the loving creator and the father that we preach, they think he won't judge anyone. He wouldn't consign anyone to everlasting torment in hell, would he? On the other hand, there's an awful lot in the New Testament about judgment. Jesus himself often spoke of it. So how, how do we square these ideas with the idea of a loving God? Well, I firmly believe that Jesus' sayings about judgment, they're not actually threats. They're warnings. And there's a world of difference. A threat says something like, if you don't do as I tell you, then I shall punish you. A warning is different. It says something like, if you carry on ignoring my advice, you will find that you're going to get yourself into difficulty. Now, I believe it's a great mistake to suppose that judgment is necessarily something that's imposed from outside, as if God were waiting for us to put a foot wrong. God, the heavenly policeman, who will pounce, cry, gotcha, and send us to punishment. Unfortunately, that's a picture which many of us carry in, in its various forms around with us for much of our lives. But I do believe that picture is really very wrong because I, I believe that God works differently. 
He has done all he can to provide us with a great deal of sensible advice. Through the Bible, through the person of Jesus, through many holy men and women since, including those still about us. All that advice is there, but he also gives us the choice whether to accept that advice or ignore it. And the sayings of Jesus about the last judgment are his warnings. If you ignore my advice, you'll find life difficult, perhaps even dangerous. It's the inevitable, natural, long-term judgment on the way we live our lives. As the old saying goes, as you sow, so shall you reap. There's a slightly more chilling Spanish version of it on the, on the subject of judgment. According to the Spaniards, God says, take whatever you want, but be prepared to pay for it. So we have the two sides of Advent to consider. We need to remember the judgment that we bring on ourselves. We spend, we spend our lives literally spending our potential and our humanity. But the bill will arrive eventually. And then we have to be sure that we have the resources to repay that debt. Only then can we appreciate the great love of God. The great task he has undertaken to bring us back to the fullness of life he designed us to enjoy. In that he sent his son to bring us back to himself, to help us to repay the debt and to avoid any future ones. Jesus acted out that advice in his person. We all need to take note. He gives us the advice which we ignore at our peril. But it's in that spirit, then, we can anticipate the true joy of Christmas, the true peace which it offers all of God's children. Amen. We'll now have a bit of reflective music from Sebastian.
Thank you, Sebastian, for that. We join together now in our affirmation of faith, our beliefs, our creed. We say together, we believe in Jesus Christ, Son of the one God, maker and sustainer of earth, sea and sky. Born of Mary's womb, faithful to the God of Abraham and Sarah, Jesus healed the sick, served the poor, and proclaimed heaven on earth. Condemned by the religious, crucified by the state, he died, but transformed even death and rose to life everlasting. He blessed the disciples with his Holy Spirit and sent them forth, east and west, north and south. We commit ourselves to Jesus, to one another as brothers and sisters, and to Christ's mission in the world in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Liz will now lead us in our Advent intercession. Almighty God and Father, help us to be still in your presence, that we may know ourselves to be your people, and you to be our God. Guide and direct, O Lord, the minds of all who work for the reshaping of the church in our time. Restore our faith and vision. Renew our energies and love. Revive your people to new life and power. So may we live and speak for Christ before the world he came to save and ever advance his kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, whose kingdom rules over all, have mercy on our broken, suffering and divided world. Shed abroad your peace in the hearts of all people and banish from them the spirit that makes for war, that all races and peoples may learn to live as members of one family and in obedience to your laws. Especially we pay, pray for people everywhere across the world suffering due to the epidemic, poverty, illness, food, lack. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all grace and truth, who came to dwell among us in your own town of Nazareth, we pray that you will give us grace to live in our local community as salt to purify it, and especially in this Advent time as a light to reveal your truth. May we not be ashamed to acknowledge you as our saviour, and may we learn so to love and honour all, that peace and goodwill may prevail among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A special prayer for Advent Sunday. Heavenly Father, as once again we prepare for Christmas, especially this year, help us to find time in our busy lives for quiet thought and prayer and contemplation, that we may reflect upon the wonder of your love and allow the story of the Saviour's birth to enter our hearts and minds, so may our joy be deeper, our worship more real, and our lives worthier of all that you have done for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring to you those whose lives are broken by ill health. May your healing spirit assist all who work to restore them, especially at this time our NHS workers who have been working so hard since the beginning of this epidemic, that in your goodness you may find, they may find wholeness in body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God and Father, whose love is stronger than death, we rejoice that the dead as well as the living are in your loving care. 
and as we remember with thanksgiving those who have gone before us in the way of Christ, we pray that we may all be counted worthy to share with them the life of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, give to us and to all your people in times of anxiety, serenity, in times of hardship, courage, in times of uncertainty, patience, and at all times a quiet trust in your wisdom and love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We turn now to our Eucharistic prayer that we come together. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right for you made us and before us you made the world we inhabit, and before the world you made the eternal home in which through Christ we have a place. All that is spectacular, all that is plain, have their origin in you. All that is lovely, all who are loving, point to you as their fulfillment. And grateful as we are for the world we know, and the universe beyond our knowledge, we particularly praise you whom eternity cannot contain for coming to earth and entering time in Jesus. For his life, which informs our living, for his compassion, which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, which contradicts our harmless generalities, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his fear is dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness. We praise you and worship him. Here too, our gratitude rises for the promise of the Holy Spirit, who even yet, even now, confronts us with your claims and attracts us to your goodness. Therefore, we gladly join our voices to the song of the church in earth and in heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And now, lest we believe that our praise alone fulfills your purpose, we fall silent. And remember him who came, because words weren't enough. Setting our wisdom, our will, our words aside, emptying our hearts and bringing nothing in our hands, we yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving which Christ alone can offer. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to settle on this bread and this wine and fill them with the fullness of Jesus. And let that same spirit rest on us, converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of him whose food we will share. Amen. And so we join in the prayer he taught us all. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke and said, This is my body, broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it to remember me. Jesus, firstborn of Mary, have mercy on us. Jesus, Saviour of the world, have mercy on us. Jesus, monarch of heaven, grant us peace. He whom the universe could not contain is present to us in this bread. He who redeemed us and called us by name now meets us in this cup. So we take this bread and this wine. In them, God comes so that we may come to God. In deep gratitude for this moment, this meal, these people, we give ourselves to you. Take us out to live as changed people because we share the living bread and cannot remain the same. Ask much of us, expect much from us, enable much by us, encourage many through us. So, Lord, may we live to your glory, both as inhabitants of earth and citizens of the commonwealth of heaven. Amen. Just before our final hymn, there are one or two notices, which may actually need a certain amount of correction. However, um, what have we got? Yes. We already have one applicant for the post of a parish administrator. But if anyone else is thinking of applying, please let Sharon know by Tuesday the 1st of December. Stanton Lake's Christmas fair event has been postponed, unfortunately. Malcolm will look after any donated bottles. I think he means you'll keep them full as well, but we'll have to check that with him. Um, a plea for help. St Mary's needs cleaning. Uh, could we have a volunteer task force on Friday the 4th at 9.30 till 11? Thank you all. And the bulb planting. Well, that's still planned now to take place as we've generously had some bulbs to replace the ones that disappeared. And that's... Um, 9.30 till 12 next Saturday. Help will be needed. Bring your own trowel uh, and uh, please help to plant as many bulbs as we can to make the church yard look wonderful and flowery in the spring. Uh, another notice, there's a huge thank you to the Christingle team of presenters, filmers, musicians, printers, packers, so many people. About 1,500 packs are going out to all the schools with an assembly. Well done, everyone. We look forward to being able to see that and see the results. 
And something that's not on the notices, but you might well uh, want to know about, I'll embarrass him totally now. Um, Sebastian is, uh, is appearing on Chorister of the Year competition. He's one of the five finalists chosen, and that will be uh, broadcast this lunchtime. I can't remember the exact time now. If you're in your uh, radio times or on your TV guide, you'll find out when it is on BBC One this lunchtime as, uh, as Sebastian demonstrates his skills on a national uh, scene. And finally, the last notice that we have here. Next week, we're back in church. Normal service times. We're in tier three, so there's no mixing before or after worship. And please keep everyone safe by keeping to the rules. Live streaming will continue from this service at St Mary's. And we're going to sing our final hymn now. I, the Lord of sea and sky, is it I, Lord?
to our blessing. Perhaps we could unmute everybody so we could hear everybody say the words, the Amen at the end. May God, who shakes the heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. Amen. 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 And as we say our amens and our so be it's, Let's not just unmute, but let's have a look at everybody and have a chance to share with each other as we greet each other in Christ's name. <laughs> the Lord be with you all. Hello. 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 Hello.